What's up residents, Jacob here. So I'm sure some of you paleo nerds are familiar with Jack Horner. What a rock star. While he is probably the most famous paleontologist out there due to his help with Jurassic Park being the inspiration for the character Alan Grant in the series, he did manage to stir up some drama in the dinosaur community back before it was cool to argue about opinions. And when it's drama about the T-Rex's eating habits, well, that just makes it that much more intense. Let's get to it! At that time, no one really knew how a Rex would find its food. So this big push by Horner and others saying that a T-Rex was more of a scavenger than the deadly predator that we have seen in films countless times over sparked a massive divide amongst fans and researchers of the tyrant lizard. And for good reason. How could the largest meat-eating dinosaur discovered and the most famous dinosaur of all time be nothing more than a glorified vulture? As much as most wanted to throw this scavenger idea out the door, there was some evidence to back the claim up though. Jaws powerful enough to crush almost any type of bone, perfect for getting the most out of an already munched on carcass. A sense of smell powerful enough to pick up the sign of a rotting corpse from miles away. A common trait associated with scavengers. The Rex was slow and way too big to be able to hunt effectively. Hard to sneak up on something when you are that big and probably not very fast. Being large does have its perks though for scavenging. Not many other dinosaurs would hold their ground when this was coming at them. There is even evidence that a Rex would dabble with cannibalism if the opportunity presented itself, as there have been Rex fossils uncovered that have signs that another of its kind ripped the flesh off the bone due to teeth marks being found on the fossils. With it being unlikely a Rex would hunt another Rex unless it was younger and much smaller, this possibly supports that a Rex would eat another Tyrannosaur if it stumbled across a deceased carcass of one. The small arms and vision of the Rex were also used as supporting evidence of the Rex being a scavenger, but recent years have debunked those ideas. Even though only about the size of a man's arms, a Tyrannosaur's arms were much stronger than our own. They may not have been ideal for hunting, but they were capable of handling some force that would be associated with grabbing prey. The vision of the Rex was still up in the air during the time of Jurassic Park. So it made sense that the can't see us if we don't move theory started a landslide of other poor vision claims. Fast forward today though, and the vision of the Rex is not only not based on movement, but it is now believed to have been better than even raptor birds of prey in today's earth. And that is just the beginning of new evidence showing that all those who were hell bent on proving to the world, or to themselves, that the Rex was solely a scavenger may have been making themselves out to be fools. The Cretaceous period was full of unique and highly adapted herbivore dinosaurs, like the Ankylosaurus and the Triceratops. Why would these animals and countless other species have such elaborate and amazing defensive adaptations if they were not for defending themselves? Look, I know the ladies love thick armor and big horns, but there's no way that those features weren't evolved specifically for defending themselves from these crushing jaws. <laughs> New research into the skeletal structure of the Rex has shown that the animal was not just a sluggish brute and had the ability to make quick movements and handle the stress from a hunt. And then the biggest discovery of all, that finally put an end to the only a scavenger belief. The discovery of what appears to be a T-Rex tooth embedded into the tailbone of a fossil found of a hadrosaur dinosaur. When the team took a look at the serrations on the tooth, they confirmed it belonged to a T-Rex. What probably went down was that the Rex attacked the Hadrosaur and for some reason came up short in its efforts, managing to only take a chomp out of the animal's tail as it was likely fleeing. With the tooth being bitten down so hard into the animal's flesh that it penetrated the bone and was deep enough that the tooth was yanked out of the Rex's jaws as the other animal ran away. I'll let that image settle into your mind for a bit. With this new information, Jack Horner stated that it's obvious that the Rex was both a predator and a scavenger. With all the hoopla of this debate being not much more than a dragged out media controversy that was trying to generate buzz. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Both a predator and a scavenger. Which makes complete sense. I'm going to get into my personal opinions for a bit. 
My entire life I have thought the Rex to be nothing more than an opportunistic feeder. If it needed to hunt, it would hunt. If it stumbled across 10 tons worth of dead dinosaur, you sure as hell know that the thing would have been like, hell yeah, prehistoric buffet. That's why it's just so awesome that there is now real evidence that supports this opportunistic eating habit theory. An animal alive today that can be compared to this is hyenas. They have bone crushing jaws, a body that doesn't appear to be fast but actually is. They'll gladly steal a kill from other predators or be more than willing to get their paws dirty and do the hunting themselves. When you keep your options open, you have a better chance of surviving. Hyenas will continue to be around long after the king of the jungle. Which is sad, but hyenas have figured out the best way to survive. EAT EVERYTHING! The Tyrannosaurus Rex did just that. Its body was perfectly adapted to be both a predator and a scavenger. And that is why if the meteor didn't wipe out the Rex, that the king of the dinosaurs would have probably still been alive today. So now we can finally get over this over-asked question. The Rex was an opportunistic animal that would kill or eat almost anything that it could. It was a survivor. Residents, if you liked today's video and want to see more on controversial topics in the paleo community, feel free to subscribe and stick around with us. Oh, and we have an Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, so find us on there, peeps. Thank you all so much for your time, and as always, peace out.